We wanted to make bedtime warm and comfortable, so we made Glowworm. Where are you going, Jen? To bed. We're going with the Glowworm. G'day guys, welcome back to Cakes by Chopper. Today I'm sharing with you something special from my childhood, the 80s glow worm. If you're an 80s baby, you know about these. If you didn't have one, you would have done anything to get one. So let me kick you in the nostalgia and take you on a trip. Let's get started. Okie dokie, once we have printed the template off from the Cakes by Chopper Facebook page, we are going to get our cake that has already been prepared, baked and cooled, obviously, and we're going to level that off. Once your cake's all leveled off, you can cut out your template. Now I'm gonna just go around the glow bug entirely, but I'm gonna cut off this headband at the side because we just need to come back to that later. We don't necessarily need that now. And I'm also gonna ignore that little collar, just the general head and body shape. Now I know I said to ignore the hat. We are going to make sure we don't cut off the head. We do keep that part of the hat in because that's hidden under the hat. Once you've cut out your little glow worm, we're gonna put them on the template head to toes just so it fits and then cut both those shapes out and then we can get them ready to stack and fill. I'm gonna use a ganache today, surprise, surprise. You can choose whatever you like. Once you've got your shapes cut out, we're gonna transfer them to your cake board and get them ready for the ganaching process. Alrighty, so I jumped ahead of myself a little. I forgot to mention we're going to carve down the edges and round out the face and the body. The body is gonna be slightly lower than the face. If you don't wanna do that, you can just build it up with a little bit more ganache. Now to give a little bit of body definition, I'm going to carve around. You can see I'm not curving that as much as it should because I'm just gonna cut it in and then just take the corners off very, very easily like that. And that way, it just saves you a lot of time being finicky. You can still get the same shape just by using the fondant and the ganache as a bit of a safeguard. And then we can go around the bottom and just taper that in just so we can get that fully rounded look. Now we are ready for everybody's favorite process. We're going to split our cake secure him to the board. Now we've got him positioned down on the board properly. I'm going to fill him with ganache and give him a crumb coat. Now, as you can see here, I haven't chilled this cake and the ganache is a little bit firm, so it's just tearing up the cake. I'm gonna go pop that into the microwave for 10 seconds and it'll be easier to crumb coat and you won't tear up and destroy the carving you've done. Okay, I'm back with my slightly warmed up ganache. If you overheat it, you can just add a couple of spoonfuls and bring it back to a, a thicker consistency. That is perfect for what I want. All right, at this point, you don't need to worry too much about the texture on the top. We're gonna to pop that into the fridge to chill for five to 10 minutes. Then we'll come back and add some more of the cooler ganache because this is now way more stable. And then we can get our final shape ready for the fondant. Okay, once that's out of the fridge, you can go through, finish your crumb coat and smooth it all out. Now, not to forget the little cheeks, I'm gonna put two little dollops either side so we can mold the fondant over the top and give him those puffy little cheeks. And if you're not as feeling as confident with putting the little dollops, you can always roll two little balls of fondant, make them into teardrop shapes and smear them down the side. You just want that little puff right here to give him that cute little smile. Whilst the little cheek bits are still soft, I'm gonna take my flesh colored fondant, I'm gonna roll that out to a decent thickness and then cover just the head portion, leaving enough of the off cuts so I can do the eyelids. Once I'm happy with the thickness, I'm going to place this over, going around the neck and just cover that headpiece entirely. Pull out any of the little pleats and just secure that around the head. Trim away your excess and neaten that up. Don't worry about the top of the head too much because that's going to be covered with some of the green fondant for his little hat. While his cheeks are still a little bit soft, I'm gonna manipulate them into the perfect position. Just gently tapping my finger and bringing it around. Then I can add in the detail for the mouth. I am going to roll a little snake and add a lip. Same process as the skin. We're gonna roll out our fondant to a decent thickness. We're gonna cover the body. Now I've rolled out this big enough so where I think I can cut it in two and do get both pieces at once. By all means, you can do this separately so you are 100% sure. However, I like taking a risk, so I'm gonna go for it. Now I'm gonna bring those sides in, just like this, and then start from the top and work those air bubbles out down around the sides. Now as we get down to the sides here, it's a great idea to grab a soft brush and you can manipulate that fondant in a little bit better. If you don't have a soft brush, just use your finger. And this is the final layer of fondant for the bottom of him. So you wanna make sure you get all the little wrinkles out, don't have any pleating, and make sure you push it in far enough so when you trim it off, you're not cutting too much off. It's gonna show the bottom of the cake. Now as a safety net, I've left a couple of millimeters that I can 
so you can see here I'm just pushing down with my finger and then I can go around the edge with my tool and just tuck under and it gives you that nice beautiful edge by all means use your brush and we will have you looking like a pro in no time now I'm going to go through with the back of my brush and just redefine those lines okay for that hat I am going to roll this out a little thinner bring my little globe worm over place his hat on use your finger to lift and bring that around we're going to cut off the excess here and we can ever so cleverly start trimming this off we're going to use our power of persuasion to lift and fold and make it look nice and neat like material sharpen off that point and we are good to go okay now i'm going to use a little quilting tool i think that's what it's called i'm going to go through and give him a seam now for the hands i'm going to just roll a nice ball cut that in half and shape that to these shapes on the body. You can use the template to measure them up. They go on the sides, even though I've put them on the middle of the template. So for the eyes, I'm gonna take two balls of white fondant, roughly the same size. Actually, that one looks to be big enough. We're gonna cut that in half. That's an easy way to help you measure. Then I'm going to flatten them out on the board and just coerce them into the flat oval shapes. Now, once we've rolled out the skin colored oval a little bit bigger than the eyes themselves, then you're going to cut that. We're going to place them on the top and you want to push the middles up just a little bit which will give that very sleepy look now for my glow bugs eyes i'm going to take a tiny tiny little bit of blue i'm going to place a ball at the top you'll see it looks kind of strange but i'm going to use my soft brush ever so gently to bring that down okay now that i'm happy with that blue i'm going to take some black food gel i'm taking a very very fine tipped brush and i'm going to trace that blue and fill in the black part. So I'm literally just lining off the blue and filling in the black pupil. Is that what it's called? There we go. Now I'm gonna add two little white dots just to bring him to life as I, I like to do with my cakes. The last couple of steps, I'm gonna make a snake. I'm gonna roll that out a little bit thicker than normal. And we're going to make the little neck piece that's across here. And when we put that on, we're going to bunch it up so it looks like the folded up material. Lastly, I'm gonna take some green panel dust, getting most of the excess off your brush. Then I'm gonna go through and darken up all those crevices and just bring it to life with a little bit of shading. Now using a bigger brush, I'm gonna go around carefully, just around the edges, and you'd be surprised how much that really lifts up your cake. Little tip with these, it's just like makeup. You wanna tap off the excess and not have too much going onto the cake at a time. You can always build it up, but packing it on and then trying to remove it is almost impossible. All right, the petal dust is done. The neck piece is on, it's finished, complete. Super cute little glowworm, taking me straight back to my childhood. I hope you guys love this cake. If you wanna check out more of my nostalgic throwback through cake, then subscribe to my channel somewhere around here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye guys.